Okay, let's talk about logic gates. So logic gates are a really simple electrical component inside a computer that allows the computer to think. Now, the first thing we need to do is remind ourselves that the computer thinks and does everything using electricity. So if you can imagine a wire, this wire is either carrying an electrical signal or it's not. So it's either on or off. So maybe we picture that as a wire that's off and this wire, maybe we can picture with electricity running through it. So maybe this wire ends up lighting a tiny little light bulb on your monitor to show a color. Or maybe it goes to playing a little sound on your speaker. But in either case, we have multiple wires that are going to be processed somehow. The computer needs to make decisions, and the way it does is by saying, this combination of wires on means to do one thing, and this combination of wires on means to do another. So we send these wires to logic gates, which is really just a collection of these really tiny little things called transistors. And a transistor is essentially like a little gate that says either let this electricity through or don't let it through. So imagine I have two wires hooked up to a box with all these transistors inside and one wire coming out of the box. I can arrange these transistors in ways that make decisions for me. And there's really only four possible inputs that will allow this box to decide something. Either both of the wires are off, both of the wires are on, only the top wire is on or only the top wire is off. Now that's a lot to keep in mind. So we're gonna make a, a little system for keeping track of it. The system's called a truth table. So let's call this wire A and this wire B. And here's our table down below. Now, writing on and off is a little bit time consuming as well. So maybe we can just represent off with zeros. So anytime I have a zero, it means something's off. So I could have one situation where A is off and B is off. That's the first scenario. The second scenario is when A is off and B is on. That's what I have drawn right now. The third scenario is A is on and B is off. And the fourth scenario is that both of them are on. So for each of these scenarios, there's some type of output. Either this wire is on or off. The computer doesn't really get into how much electricity is going through the wire. That begins, it begins to get too complicated. The, the binary system of representation is simple. Either there is electricity or there's not. Once you start making it more complicated, everything gets more complicated. So. What this box does determines what kind of logic gate it is. So instead of having this mystery box the way I have it drawn now, I'm going to draw a symbol that represents a particular type of logic gate. This is called an AND gate. So it looks like a big capital D. So I have two inputs going into this little system of transistors. And this gate is going to tell me when they're both on, when A and B are on. So what happens is, in the first scenario where A is off and B is off, the output is also off. In the second scenario where A is off and B is on, they're not both on, so the output's still off. In the third scenario where A is on and B is off, they're still not both on, the output's zero. And in the last scenario where both of them are on, finally, this little logic gate turns on. Now, we're talking about this at the level of wires and binary, and it doesn't seem like it makes much sense. But we make decisions like this all the time. For example, if it's raining and I have to go outside, I should get an umbrella. So imagine this wire was hooked up to a light bulb, and this light bulb flashes on when you need an umbrella. That's useful. It's a useful tool. It's basically a simple computer. Or well, maybe these inputs, one of them turns on when it's raining. You have a little water collection device outside, and when water goes into it, it turns this device on. And maybe the other one is a little light switch that you flip and say, hey, if I have this switch up, it means I'm going outside. Or if it's down, it means I'm not going outside. So with those two inputs, this little electric device can make a decision for you. It can think for you and say, hey, do I need an umbrella or not? And it'll do the work. But this is a really simple example. And AND gate is not a real complicated decision. 
But if you couple one logic gate with millions upon millions of other logic gates, you can then start to make really complicated decisions. So that's one example. I'm going to put the symbols for it. An AND gate uses two ampersands in the Java language and many other languages. So that's the output if we use an AND gate. There is also a thing called an OR gate. An OR gate looks like this, like a little Star Trek symbol on its side. And an OR gate says, are either of these things on? So for example, uh, if I get a walk in baseball or if I get a hit in baseball, I get to go to first base. It doesn't matter which, as long as one of those happens, I go to first base. So an OR gate says, are either one true? Nope. So the output is off. In this scenario, is at least one of them true? Yep. So the output's on. In this scenario, at least one of them is on. So the output's on. And in this scenario, they're both on, but I only need one of them. Doesn't matter. It's good enough. Now, there's a number of logic gates that exist. Uh, they're all very simple, and they all follow the same format. Take input, run it through a simple process, and then you make all decisions you need to using using that system. So, that's logic gates. Bye now.